morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on Saddle 3 regarding ground improvements. My name is Steve Chai, and I'm a project manager at Rock Science, working with Saddle 3 and Nurse Pile. Today, we have Louis with us from Worcester Bearground Engineering. Um, he will be covering more in the practical side of Saddle 3, and I'll be covering more on the theoretical and the modeling aspect of Saddle 3. So today's so webinar will be focusing on both of the aspects and we'll go into each details on providing an efficient way to model a ground improvement and how to get the analysis results using Saddle 3. About rock science. Rock science is a world leader in developing innovative 2D and 3D software for solo mining and geotechnical engineers. For 25 years, we've built geotechnical tools used by over 10,000 users around the world. And we're dedicated to delivering industry-leading software programs, exceptional customer service, unparalleled technical expertise that engineers can always rely on. Programs for Settlement and Foundation. We have programs such as RS2, RS3, Settle3, RSPile, RS data, DIPS, and RS log. This can be accurately used to model and analyze foundations, embankments, surface loads, and more with advanced 3D soil sediment and pile analysis software. You can easily analyze liquefaction, CPT, SPT, wick drains, and more, including ground improvement as well, which we'll be covering more in details from this webinar. Settle 3 is a soil sediment and consolidation analysis program and can experience robust, flexible, and fast sediment analysis with Settle 3. This powerful software allows you to analyze immediate sediments, primary consolidation, and secondary sediment of embankments, foundations, and surface loads. With many features such as easy appreciation of soil profiles and ground improvement options, Settle 3 provides the flexibility you need for accurate sediment analysis results. So as you can see from this diagram, we have sediments. And today's overview we will be looking at is ground improvements, will soil replacement, fiber compaction, and stone columns. And in terms of drainage, there are three different options that users can define. So drainage at bottom, quick drains, and stone column drainage option. So we'll, cover, we'll be covering more in details on the theoretical part, as well as modeling aspect of these analysis. So in moving on to ground improvement, ground improvement regions can be added to the model using soils, ground improvements, and add ground improvement region. And three of the methods are available, which are soil replacement, fiber compaction, and soil columns. So as you can see in this dialog, you have drop down under the methods, and three of the methods can be chosen. Moving on to the ground improvement soil replacement. Soil replacement is a straightforward method for improving in situ soil properties. The soil is simply replaced by another material, and the user is asked to input the following parameters, which are top depth, bottom depth, and soil properties. So, as you can see from this dialog, you have a region under the load which you can replace with another material. So, under this, now we're replacing with soil property five from the top elevation of zero meters to minus 20 meters. And you can apply this in circular shape. The selected region soil property in soil replacement will simply replace the material of the selected region. And it's elastic modulus of the existing soil is replaced by the new materials elastic modulus. To improve the total sediment of soil, it should be noted that replacing with lower elastic modulus will replace or result in increase in sediment. Moving on to vibro compaction. The vibro compaction technique involves compacting the soil by shaking the granular materials to fill the voids. This method is primarily used with sandy soils and is not effective on cohesive soils and some silty sands. So as you can see from this dialog, there are some regions where gravel to fine sand is preferred as a viable compaction method for the ground improvement. And fine to silty uh, to clay, we encourage users to use uh, stone columns. So moving on to the viable compaction theory. The, in set of three, we calculate the new equivalent modulus of elasticity, which is calculated using the method below. 
So we have the SPT and calculated for the value of 60% of the free fall hammer using the relative density at E50. So N60 can be calculated using that. And we have the modulus of elasticity, which is uh, defined by the N60 times atmospheric pressure and times alpha values. And we have different types of suggested values for different types of soil that you use in Settle. So we always encourage you to check out our documentation for these uh, parameter explanations and suggested values. So in terms of explaining viable compaction, the following input parameters are required for a Settle 3 to compute the sediment analysis. Uh, this include the mean grain size, the target relative density, as we've explained earlier, and the coefficient alpha values. We have some verification example from the paper, which have analyzed the FPM model using equivalent um, stiffness of the improved ground region. And these are the following properties that they've used. And we can see that the model uh, shows improvement in sediment by approximately 10% using viable compaction. And below shows the model results with the equations that are used for our viable compaction method, and they are in good agreement with Settle 3 to calculate the values. Moving on to stone columns. Stone column is a replacement of soil with pattern of compacted vertical stone columns. So as you can see on the diagram on the left, we have the dialog for the stone columns. And you can define different parameters. And what we can see from the right hand side is a model that you can define any region with different spacing and different soil columns. So let's say you have a foundation where you want to apply stronger or stiffer reinforcement near the vicinity of the foundation. Then you can assign uh, closely spaced stone columns and out of the region of where you are applying the ground improvement, you can assign more spaced out um, stone columns with maybe uh, less stiff stone column compaction you can apply in the model. So set of three requires the user to input the following parameters. And the parameters are the following. There's a pattern type, which is a square or a triangular. There's center to center spacing. There's the diameter of each columns and the elastic modulus of the columns and allow drainage option on the dialog, which will cover more in details for the allow, uh, allow drainage option. But if you don't have this option on, then for these four above parameters will be what you're using. The stone column theory, the ground permit using stone column in Saddle 3 uses the equation from JM's paper. And the first we calculate the area replacement ratio, which actually has the area replacement with respect to cross-section area of the columns, the tributary area of the columns, the diameter of the columns, uh, center to center spacing between the columns, and the cost of value for either square or a triangular pattern. So this will then calculate the equivalent or the effective area impact of your stone columns to the soil. Stress concentration ratio calculates the ratio of the elastic modulus of columns to soil. So what you see from here is a parameter N, which is equals to one plus 0 0.217 times uh, EC over ES minus one where ES is elastic modulus of soil, EC is elastic modulus of the columns. And based on the field data, the modulus uh, ratio of uh, EC or ES should be limited to 20. So as you can see from this dialog, you can see the spacing of different types. And moving on to the stress reduction factor, you uh, can calculate the stress distribution of the columns to the soil as uh, shown below. So under the rigid loading, the stress distribution of the columns and the soil can be simplified as we see from figure two. And that's based on the force equilibrium where the following relationship is distributed or as the force total equals to force on soil and force on the columns. And that equals to now stress times area and the tributary area that we explained earlier comes into play in this to calculate the force equilibrium that distributes over to the columns to the soil. So you can see you have the parameters as shown here with influence area of the columns and average area of the vertical segments. Now moving on to verifying our results. What we've done is we've taken the example that we had uh, earlier and we've applied the stone columns with that example. 
And what we see from this example is that we had 33% improvement in the total sediment with stall columns and ground improvement. And the diagram on the right shows the improvement and also uh, the results are in good agreement with the theoretical solutions to what we get from um, set of three. We can also apply ground improvement as tibial analysis, where it allows users to run sense tibial analysis with parameters of ground improvement. For instance, stone column parameters in tutorial 18, you can see on the right, if you right click on the core point and select this option, it allows you to plot different um, sediment over the parameters that you define. So let's say you have stone column uh, ranging from 25,000 to 50,000 in increments of 2,500. How much of the sediment do I be, would I be improving over, uh, over the range of values that you choose for this specific parameter? And you can also do so with spacing, diameter, top depth, bottom depth of uh, the stone pumps. So it makes it much easier for you to analyze what you were intended target to. Uh, some of the additional tips for stone columns. There is a threshold limit for the interaction of stiffness of columns and stiffness of soil for a ground improvement. Adding stiffer column, stone column beyond this limit will not improve sediment. So EC or ES should be limited to 20. It's, principle, it's based on principle of practice ground improvement by Jia Han in chapter 5.34. And we explained earlier in this stress concentration ratio where the stiffness should, ratio should not be greater than 20. So the graph shows that there's a cap. So it doesn't mean that if you apply a stiffer column, you'll necessarily get a greater sediment. This will be capped by the stiffness ratio as shown. But we have to use the stall column drainage condition. So stall columns with drainage can be enabled by a user selecting on allowed drainage in stall columns. And this can be used to accelerate consolidation with drainage path of the stone columns. The theory in stone column drainage works similar to weight drains. So on the left side, we see the weight drains with uh, drainage diameter and the smear zone and the clay effect. So the diameter of the E and the stone columns on the other hand has a drainage surface and you have the stone column diameter and then you have the drainage surface with um, the permeability coming through effect. So with drains and stone columns, as you can see, when you look at degree of consolidation calculation, you will see that there is a parameter that's ex exponential to eight times TR over U, but on the stone columns, you would have TRM over F prime. And the width drains, you have TR over mu. So you will see that the equations are similar, but when you move on to calculate the well resistance, the TR is different. And what's different between these two is that when you look at the width drains versus stall columns, the TRM includes the stress concentration ratio, which we explained earlier. So not just uh, does it calculate the smear zone effect with the stone columns, but on top of that, it does have stress concentration ratio of the stone columns to the surrounding soil. Now, moving on to required inputs for stone column drainage, you have DS over DC, which needs to have ratio of the smear zone to drainage well, um, KR over KS, which needs to have ratio or permeability of undisturbed to the smear zone, and the vertical drainage permeability of the stone columns. Again, uh, it is a bit challenging on how to determine these parameters. And moving on to stone columns drainage feature, you will have one case where you have without stone column permeability and one case with the stone column permeability. And we're looking at consolidation of sediment after one month. And as you can see, the sediment has significantly improved with the permeability assigned. And you can see that it take, takes around 17 years for the permeability with the stone columns. But you see that the sediment has improved significantly. So you're looking at 0 0.218 to 0 0.472. And you look at the quarry point, you will see that to reach 90% of consolidation, it takes around 17 years to reach to one month of consolidation. Whereas uh, with the permeability, you're looking at around nine years. So this time it takes to reach 90% of consolidation is shortens significantly when stone column permeability is introduced. So this is a verification check with analytical solutions provided for a double drainage path. And double drainage path means you will have a permeable layer for the stone column, so it will be uh, drainage on both of the directions. 
So you'll see that there is a good agreement with server-free analysis results and the theoretical analysis results. Moving on to some problems with single drainage option. So this option allows users to define the drainage path that is defined by the full column name. So enabling this option allows you to define the drainage um, behavior of the stone columns. So it all depends on whether you want to have um, full length of the drainage path for your stone column, or you want to have half of the drainage length. And more details details on this behavior is explained in Jihan's paper. So we encourage you to check out the paper. And we also have another feature where it allows users to very high variable stone column stiffness at different soil depths. So users can define different stone column stiffness for the soil depth as shown. And this allows flexibility for users to define different improved uh, ground under along the depth of the soil. So providing stiffer columns and the depth that needs that has loose sand while providing lesser stiff columns for the depth that has high stiffness soil. And we've published a recent paper for our RIC 2023 uh, and the title, uh, A Ground Improvement Case Study Using Soil Replacement or Soil Columns Using Serial 3 and RS3. So we've compared the results with Serial 3 and also the results with variable columns, uh, stone column depth and uh, the stiffness. And we've compared that with uh, the 3D finite MLM program using a composite stiffness uh, improved region under the foundation. So it, if you're interested, we encourage you to check out the paper as well. And of course, this example, uh, Lewis will be covering more in details for the loads that is applied and how the ground improvements uh, comes into play when you assign it under the loads and you see the improvement on the sand. On the dialog, you see that you can apply it in different stages as well. So some of the future development plans that we have for ground improvement will be adding a different ground improvement methods. Uh, we're currently looking at dynamic compaction, jet routing, it may be a little bit tricky, but we are still investing in ways to effectively or efficiently capture this behavior. And also ground improvement drainage path can also be added to the sensitivity analysis. Right now we have all of the stone column, permit, uh, all of the stone column parameters, except these permeability options, which can be included in the sensitivity analysis. So of course, we also always encourage users, or we are always open to new ideas. If the users are looking for new features they want to work with, uh, we are always open to these ideas. So please uh, feel free to send us an email and we'll be sure to follow up with uh, investigating on these issues or the new uh, suggestions. Now we'll be covering demos, so let me explain what some of the examples that we'll be using for demonstrating how it works. So first demo we'll be covering is the soil column drainage option. So the model has a load and the stall columns with the water table. And you will have stall column drainage option and consolidation sediment before and after the drainage effect. And the time for a point to see the difference between these two sediments. And the second column, uh, a second example that I'll be covering with soil column ground improvement is um, if you have a more complex structures, how to assign um, stone columns and how to assign that in different regions and different stages with different stiffness. So this example will give you more um, exposure to how to apply ground improvement with more complex uh, loading structures. And the third case that I'll be covering is uh, stone column drainage with more, uh, more multiple loads. And this example will cover uh, multiple foundation that is applied in the model. And we'll be going through uh, how soil is created with the section creator. Uh, this is something that we've introduced in the past and how users can define really the geometry of the soil and that can be extruded in 3D view. And of course, the drainage option is the key feature that we want to focus on where the improvement of the sediment can be shown as shown in the right. As what we had before and what we had after significantly reduces the time it, it requires for soil to reach 
90% of the consolidation with the same load that is applied. So let's now move on to the uh, cases. Okay, let me start with the demo. So the first model we have uh, a foundation, rectangular foundation load applied. And you'll see from this model that there is no stone column ground improvement applied. So it is just a surface load applied. And you will see that there are two stages, stage one being zero years and stage two, one month after the load has been applied. And what you can see from here is a time query point. You can add a time query point by going to query and enter time points. So we can go to add time points and select how many number, uh, how many percentage of degree consolidation that you want and the what stage you want to see the reference of the time that progresses. So in this case, we have chosen um, the starting phase, which is zero years. And at what specific depth you want to see the progression of the consolidation. So in this case, we will be choosing zero meters on top of the loads. And we are seeing how long it takes for this load to reach 90% of consolidation. So as you can see from here, when you assign the time query point, then you will see this time query pop up and stage one where we have applied. And you will see that at depth of zero, the degree of consolidation to reach 90%, it takes around 16 plus 68, nine years. And you'll see that initially it starts off with 0.1 meters. And then when you get to the second stage, then it gets to 0 0.26 uh, total sediment. Now let's see what happens when you have the stall columns with drainage option. So let's go to the model now, which has the stall columns applied. So you will see from this 3D view, this model has a ground improvement applied. So let's check the properties for the stone columns. So you can go to soils and the ground under the ground permits tab, you can select edit. And as you see, if you edit this, then you'll be able to see a full detail of the ground improvement. So in this case, we have stone columns under ground improvement with column spacing of square or triangular pattern with spacing of 2.4 meters. And uh, we're applying the depth uh, starting from zero to 0 0.8 diameters with six meters depth with 30,000 elastic modulus in KPA. We're starting at stage zero and you select allow drainage. And as you can see here, we have the smear down to drain wall diameter and undisturbed to smear soil permeability and permeability of the stone column itself. This would be 3.67 to the minus seven. And as we explained earlier, uh, if you hover over, then it will give you a toolbar tooltip on the single drainage option. So that the full length versus half length of your drainage. So where since we have not selected this, that means we have a double drainage path for the stone column. Now let's check the results. So when you compute, then you will see that the time query point, it takes 90% to reach consolidation for the nine years of this specific load. So we definitely see the huge difference in saving time when we had um, stall columns into drainage versus the model that didn't have stone columns. So let's go back to the model that didn't have the stone column, which was approximately 16 to 17 years. But now with the stone columns, now we have nine years to reach 90% of the consolidation. And you will see that it's also uh, increased the consolidation sediment with the drainage option. So this is one of the examples in which stall columns can be used with the drainage option to accelerate your consolidation. So you can uh, model and analyze how to um, analyze your structural loads with stall columns. Now let's move on to the uh, next, next example. So next example involves more complex uh, geometry of your foundation. So let's say you have a water tank and you have different uh, shape um, structural loads. And in, there are cases in your project where you might involve a lot of uh, state mm, stone columns. 
So in this case specifically, you have a, a geometry of the loads that is defined, and you want to assign a specific regions where you will want to apply a different um, column stiffness or different spacing of the columns, or maybe uh, different drainage uh, parameters for the sum columns. And as you can see, we have different staging of the stone columns coming into play as well. So if you look closely on the model at stage one, um, you have zero month of consolidation where you have the first uh, phase of the ground improvements. And then over time, you actually have uh, more stone columns that are applied. Then you apply uh, a structure loads after that. And you can see the progression of the consolidation that happens over time. Um, so let's go to now it's soils. You go to edit, then you'll see each ground region, ground improvement region has advanced staging. So if you click on this, then you will see that now we have add stock columns in different stages, which you can apply the pattern and spacing. And for the stages that you define, you can actually have different um, elastic modulus for different depths of the models. For this example, we specifically chosen a consistent elastic modulus, but this was just to show that you can apply um, different stiffness for the stone columns as well. And you can see from here, the first layer of the stone columns is applied in zero month. And then after seven months, we apply a deeper uh, stone columns in the model. And similar thing here as well, in different regions, now we have the first layer, which is applied in zero months. And then after seven months, we apply two, two different stages. Um, so stage two and stage three, where the second layer of the stone column is applied. And same thing as well for the other region of the garden permit, where you have the first layer applied and the second layer applied after seven months. So this was just to show how uh, flexible the users can apply different ground improvement regions and different stages at which users can apply the stone columns. Moving on to the next example. Now you have a more complex geometry and you have different uh, loading profile, such as a uh, different mass structure or you have water tanks and you want to apply the total sediment of your project uh, that you want to define for the region. And first, let's look at how the soil profile is created. So, because if you look at the 3D model of this, you will see that there is um, a cross section of the soil profile that you see, and this is extruded in the orthogonal direction of where you have to find for your cross section of the soil. So let's right click on the model and you will see that this is a uh, soil profile that uh, users have defined with respect to the boreholes that they, that they have uh, defined from the model. So you have uh, first layer and then you have second layer. And the beauty of this is that you can define uh, different, uh, you're free to define any shape or any geometry, any soil profile that you want the cell three to, uh, to model. So you can apply uh, structure loads or any foundation loads on top and then run the analysis and get the results with respect to different soil properties or soil layers that you've defined from this section creator. And what this then will do is then it will just extrude that 2D soil profile to 3D. So you can assign different loads and see its impact. Um, and if you go to this specific example, if you go to the soils, and you go to ground improvement edits, then you'll see there are many other ground improvement that is applied underneath the, uh, the foundation. And for each of these ground improvement, what we have done is we have unselected the allow drainage option, which means the stone columns will only apply um, without the drainage consider, uh, coming into effect. So we can see here all of the ground improvement doesn't have any allowed range option and it's applied in stage two at the top depth of five meters and uh, excuse me, top elevation of five meters and then bottom elevation of minus five meters. 
diameter of 0.6 and 80,000 kPa for elastic wireless. And what you can see here, let me run the compute, that you'll see the time query point underneath this foundation load takes around approximately 120,000 days for the specific load with ground improvement without the drainage to get to 90% of consolidation. Now, let's take a look at what happens when you run the analysis with the allow drainage option. So now we have another model. This is identical to what we had before, but if you go to SOTOS and you go to edits for each of the ground improvement that we apply outside, now you'll see that we have the allow drainage option on with these parameters that we have chosen. So uh, smear zone to one to drain well diameter and the undisturbed to the smear zone uh, soil permeability of one and permeability of the stall columns where we've defined as well. And when you run compute for this disk model, then you will see that it takes around 104,000 days. So it does tip significantly improve the uh, settlements and consolidation. So that's uh, another example to see how your allowed drainage effects from stall column affects your overall um, settlement analysis. So that concludes the three demos that I want to uh, show on how several three can be used uh, with stone columns to improve the ground and also allow the drainage to, uh, to be considered in your analysis. And also different staging effects on how stone columns can be applied uh, along different depths of soil and run the analysis and get the results. Thank you very much. And now uh, Lewis will uh, cover more case studies regarding how Zero3 can be used in the practical side of the ground improvements. Okay, see, thank you so much. Um, I want to first thank uh, the Rock Science uh, Group uh, for allowing me to, invite me to present at this webinar. Um, I'm just going to present uh, just one case uh, a recent job we did in South Florida. Um, so my name is Luis Gonzalez. I'm a regional manager for a Wooster Ground. That's our uh, ground improvement uh, company. Uh, we provide ground improvement services throughout uh, the Southeast of the United States. Um, so as I mentioned, um, I'm gonna show you guys um, today uh, a recent job we completed. We already built this job uh, last year, November, December of last year uh, in South Florida. This uh, was a story multifamily tower uh, with a foot train of approximately about 55,000 square feet. That's about uh, 5,000 square meters. Um, the structural design criteria for this job, uh, the geotechnical engineer recommended the aggregate beers, uh, typical column loads between 300 and 1600 kips, that's about 150 to uh, 800 tons. Uh, the specified bearing capacity uh, was 8000 BSF, which is about 40 tons uh, per square meter. Um, they also provided uh, contact pressure for the MAF foundations, I will show that a little bit later. Uh, total settlement criteria was one inch and half an inch differential. Uh, so for this particular job, there were two challenges, um, control settlement with the ground improvement, but also increase the bearing capacity. Uh, typically for the salts in the area without any improvement, you will get somewhere around 3000 PSF, which is about 15 tons per square meter. So that was one of the reasons for uh, the geotechnical engineer to recommend the ground improvement just to increase the bearing capacity and be able to control settlements but also reduce the size of the points. So here's a foundation plan, as I mentioned, you know, um, even with 8,000 PSF, and I, I apologize for uh, it's, it's hard to see, but you can see here all the spread footings. So even with 8,000 PSF, the, the footings were really close to each other. So if, if ground improvement was not used on this job, you could not, the, the footage will be touching to each other. So that's the reason why they recommend the ground improvement. And what I want to show, uh, particularly in this job, I'm going to focus on this. There is a mud foundation. There were several mud foundations throughout the 
is structured by Foundation 6, um, where the staircase was, uh, the elevator shop was, uh, that was the main concern for us due to the size and the contact pressure. So here is also an idea with the different footing sizes there. Um, eight feet by eight feet, that's uh, two and a half by two and a half meters, all the way to three and a half by three meters. Um, here for the mud foundation six, here is the foundation plan. Here is the, the sketch. So it's about 32 feet wide. That's about 10 meters by about 55 feet wide, which is about 70 meters. So you can see here they have the staircase and the elevator shaft. So here is the loading uh, information provided by the structural engineer for all the mats foundation throughout the site. Uh, as I said, I'm going to present and going to show uh, the calculations for the mat foundation six. Um, as you can see, contact pressures, this is just based on death and life load, where between 145 kPa to up to 280 kPa, so about 3,000 uh, PSF to almost 6,000 PSF. Here's a better detail of the loading information, uh, the loading condition for that mat. As you can see, you know, it was the, the main reason we we selected this mat is because you can see the, the variation of the contact pressure throughout the, the mat foundation. So uh, we wanted to see um, total and differential settlement uh, of this particular mat due to the size of this foundation. Um, Soil profile in that South Florida area is basically really clean sands, loose uh, to medium dense sands uh, in the upper uh, 35, 40 feet, and then about 38, 35 feet all the way down. You start getting into what is called the limestone. They, they, they mentioned here lime rock, but it's mainly limestone. It's weather limestone. Um, as far as the soil profile for the sediment analysis, here is a soil profile we selected um, uh, with the uh, uh, modulus values here. These are the modulus values for the soil. And uh, for the metric unit, uh, here are some, some conversions uh, for the metric units. Um, so we selected a, a layer in the, from 0 to 14 feet, that's 0 to a little bit over 3 meters, and then all the way to about uh, from 3 meters. So, uh, four meters to about uh, 15, uh, 12 feet or so, uh, the, the medium dense uh, sand, and then below that we have the weather lines. So now I'm gonna get into the, uh, the different models with it. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you guys the, I'm gonna look at the soil replacement. So um, as I mentioned before, uh, there were two challenges here, increase the bearing capacity and also settlement. Uh, without improvement, we were getting about inch and a quarter, inch and a half uh, for the loads uh, for this particular map foundation. Um, and then, so first I'm going to look at the soil replacement. Um, as Steve mentioned, uh, we added at the model with the different um, soil uh, conditions here, the, the elastic settlement with the different layers. Um, you can see we use the, the, the clean sand between 0 and 14 uh, feet, then the medium dense sand between 14 and 38 feet. Here's the E values in KSF. And then um, for the limestone. So we generated our model for that. And also on the on the soil replacement method, you need to generate your, I call it GI, ground improvement layer. Um, and the number you're gonna use here on your, on your um, E value is a composite value that Steve mentioned before. You have to take a percentage of the, the soil modulus and a percentage of the uh, modulus of the column to determine these values. So as you can see here, um, I have a value because the modulus of the soil is different. Uh, I have a ground improvement layer between 0 and 14 with a E composite, and then between 14 and 18, my, my ground improvement system is going to go to 18 feet. That's what we determined. So I entered these values. These values need to be entered in the, when you are um, entering the soil properties. 
So once I, once I do that, stop it for a second. Um, I go here, um, uh, properties, and I select this. You have the different method that Steve mentioned. You go to soil replacement, and then you can select for all the different soil types you have uh, the soil layer that you are considering your ground improvement. And you can see here, I selected the ground improvement between 0 and 14, and then you have to determine the depth. In this case, I'm showing that the top depth is four feet because the bottom of the footing is about four feet. So um, between four feet and 14, I have selected this ground improvement layer and then between 14 and eight, I selected this layer as well. Um, one thing I wanna show you guys, uh, as far as the loads, um, it was a little bit challenging because as I show you, uh, the loading condition changed throughout the, uh, the footprint of the mat. So I have to uh, several polygonal loads here, as you can see, uh, this one is a three and a half KSF. Uh, so basically I have to, I, I selected here the, the previous of, um, colors of the, the, the structural provider. So I have to add these different polygonal loads. As you can see that the values change. Uh, so we have a three and a half here, five and a half, almost six KSF here based on the previous contact pressure information I sent you, uh, I show. So that would made it a little bit challenging that I have to add these um, values here. Uh, once I did that, uh, and I selected my uh, soil improvement system, um, um, I just generated the, uh, the settlements and um, because it's a rigid system and I added a, a grid, it, it takes longer to run than that. Uh, the results of this particular um, system using the, the soil replacement. Um, as I mentioned, improvement, we were getting somewhere around the one and a half um, basement uh, method. Uh, uh, we were getting somewhere around 0.5 to 0.8 throughout the, the footprint. So here, one of the things to consider is, uh, as I mentioned, I added these different polygonal loads and these have different values. So the, the, the program had a, it was half the program, you know, you have these boundary conditions here where the load jumped from three and a half to five and a half. So this, if this were just a continuous or homogeneous load, you wouldn't see any of these. So these, these settlements here might, might be a little bit misleading and again, not because of the software, it's just because the way I entered these loads. Um, so, but to point out is that for this particular layer of this particular condition, uh, we were getting um, settlement between, you can see here in this area about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 inches, uh, 0.6 over here to about 0.4 in the corners. So that's, um, that's a result we go, which is within the tolerance. We were looking at an inch of uh, total settlement. So um, that was uh, what we did with the soil replacement on this particular footing. We use about 20% error replacement ratio. That was the target. And we use a, a modulus of the column about um, uh, 4,000 KSF, which is about 2,000 KSF. Now I'm gonna show you guys the same model, uh, the same footing, but instead of doing the soil replacement model, I use the stone column model. So again, the loading conditions are the same as you guys can see here, the different uh, loads that were applied. Um, the only thing I did was to now, instead of having the soil replacement model, I use, I selected uh, the stone column modules here, you can, uh, Method here, you can see I switch just to stone columns. I determine the spacing, and as you can see here, um, at the top depth was four feet, at bottom depth eighteen feet, same depth that the previous layer. Uh, the diameter of the footing of the piers is at two and a half feet. That's about 70, 75 centimeters, and then the elastic modulus of the, the column that I used is around four thousand 
ASA. Um, and then when I do that, it generates, uh, for a second, it generates, um, I have to run this first, I guess. Um, it's going to calculate the, uh, the settlement, and I'll show you in a second. Here you will see the different, the, the, uh, the software based on the spacing lay, uh, provides a layout of this stone column. So a second after we get the results, I can show you guys what it looks like. Um, I just want to compare the results are very similar, which we would expect. You know, you're never going to get the same result, but they should be pretty close uh, depending on what system, uh, whether you use the solar replacement method or the stone column method. So here, uh, as you can see, uh, the same, uh, having the same issue with uh, in the boundaries, the software was calculated in uh, excessive settlement, which is not the case. It's just basically, as I mentioned before, because of difference on, on, on the boundary conditions. But um, looking at the results, um, that we obtain are kind of basically the same. In the previous model, here we were getting about 0 0.7, 0 0.8. As you can see here, it's around the same number, where here we're getting a little bit less, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so the results match very well. Uh, one thing that I want to show you guys here is, as I mentioned, with the, with the ground improvement um, method, you can see, the, I don't know if it's clear to see, but you can see here the different uh, the layout we show the different stone columns. It doesn't show it to scale, that's fine, but uh, you can see um, the, all those little sticks there are supposed to be the stone columns. And then you can also see it here from the top. Uh, if you zoom in a little bit more, uh, you can see the different dots there that represent um, the stone columns. So again, that's, that's basically what I wanted to show you guys. You know, uh, as I mentioned, the two methods are uh, Match perfectly. Um, uh, that's all I wanted to show you guys today. So um, I'll get it back to Steve uh, for any questions. Thank you, Lewis, for the great presentation. Um, okay, thank you very much for attending uh, the webinar, and we'll be sure to answer all the questions that you have given us, and we'll get back to you in in very short ma time manner, and as well all of the. Uh, discussions that we had today will be provided for you in the YouTube link. So uh, be sure to check out our YouTube link. So uh, go back and rewatch the webinar. And yeah, please uh, follow us on YouTube as well uh, for more uh, contents. Thank you very much. And hope you have a great rest of the day.